Let's talk about Texas A&M. All right? Go Aggies! Is that on camera? <laughs> okay. After traveling to Texas many times, I've heard all about College Station and Texas A&M. So it was interesting to actually go there and see it firsthand because Texas A&M, to their credit, they have like this like cult-like following. I mean, the people who are Texas A&M fans are diehard. We pull into College Station and it's like you're driving for a ways and there's nothing and then all of a sudden you're in this town and, and that's the college, that's all that's there. The Texas A&M campus is huge. You know that saying, uh, everything's bigger in Texas. You know, you walk, you know, 10, 15 minutes and you're not even, you're not even penetrating, you know, the middle of campus. I don't know if I've ever seen a campus so big. It's like, you feel like you're three miles away from campus and you're still on campus. I'm gonna talk about the stadium. I mean, this thing is like, it looks like a spaceship. Seats over 100,000 people, the architecture's great. I mean, our seats were kind of far up, but we had to go from literally like 17 levels to get all the way up. I mean, you went from like an elevator to a rope. I mean, this place is just ginormous. We went to this classic bar there called the Dixie Chicken. Awesome bar. Still some of the walls from like the early 1900s. There's a rattlesnake in the back. We tried to get Marty to touch it. He wouldn't those, I don't know why. A really cool scene. They got good food, good beers on tap and we made friends instantly. We got to meet some really cool people and it's just a really fun environment. It's like one of those local bars that everybody goes to to hang out with their friends, talk shop. One of the gentlemen who hosted us, he was a, a former quarterback there and um, he, we were chatting with somebody else and, and we mentioned his name and they were like, oh yeah, we remember David Walker, Moonwalker. That was like his nickname apparently and we didn't know that. So it was kind of cool to see uh, people know who he was. All right, so yell practice at midnight. Everyone goes to the stadium, fills it up, and they start doing their traditional chants. And actually, I, I'm sorry, don't call them chants. They're called yells, because yell practice. And yell practice is being conducted by these yell leaders. It's these guys in all white with no shoes on. Their, their, their shirts are ruffled up. They're, they're buff and they are leading everyone through these crazy yells and they're, they're yelling to thousands of people. So it's a really cool uh, scene to see. So if you ever get a, an opportunity or a chance to see that, very cool, uh, I'd highly recommend it. These yell leaders practice getting the crowd hyped up for the next day. And they have all these signs, like they like point and they move their feet and twist and things like that. But all of those things are like indications on what chant they're gonna do and how to yell. And so I don't think we've ever seen anything like that on any trip we've been on. So that was pretty unique. The night before uh, the game, there was like some tsunami warning, hurricane warning. And all of a sudden, you know, things started to get canceled. The yell practice was almost canceled and the game at that point, to our knowledge, was almost in jeopardy. And so all of a sudden there's like tickets going on sale online for like $3. I mean, people are fleeing the town because they just don't know what's gonna happen. Every fan was like almost apologizing like, hey, tomorrow we don't know what it'll be like just because of the rain. And so we wake up early on game day morning and you know, people all over our social media stuff just saying, we're sorry, don't come, all this good stuff. The tailgating is gonna be awful, but you know what? We came there for one thing and one thing only and we wanted to see what Texas A&M had to bring. We went on campus and to be honest, it was, it was like bare bones. I mean, tumbleweeds. I mean, well, not that bad, but there was just a field that would normally have all these tailgaters, thousands of tailgaters. There just wasn't anybody there. So we got to we hang out with some friends. We got to drink some cool drinks. We got to eat some uh, cool eats. We met some really gracious people, tailgated with them, played some lawn games. But overall, and, and I know it's due to weather, but the tailgating kind of sucked. I mean, I'm going to be frank. Uh, shout out to the guys though who let us play washers with them, they were cool. The tailgates we went to afterwards were great. A couple of the biggest ones that AM has, they won some awards last year and they let us try 
a little bit of everything. One of the tailgates had a snake in a cooler and the cooler said free sodas. So we had Kyle go over there and grab us sodas. So he opens the cooler and immediately just jumps back like 10 feet because there's this little rattlesnake in there. But food experience at A&M post game was outstanding. Texas A&M was unique because there's very few schools that I've ever seen that has like this like brotherhood or sisterhood that Texas A&M has. I mean, it seems like it, it's so influential that I could totally see them hiring people just because they went to Texas A&M and their jobs or this or that because I mean, it is like such a thick bond. So that was one thing that I thought was really cool. Their culture, even though it was unique, really stood out.